Hi everyone, I'm Linda Reimer, one of the librarians at the Southeast Tibet County Library. Welcome to Library Connections, our weekly readers and listeners advisory video cast. And I have a hat on because I'm recording this in the community room where it is a little bit cold. They're working on uh, fixing the whatever's goofy with the heating system in here. But anyway, right now if you uh, hang out at the library in the community room, bring a sweater or a hat, because it's a little bit cold. And I'm digressing. On to Library Connections. Library Connections number 137. This is the Friday, March 24th, 2023 edition of Library Connections. Jumping in with the top five fiction bestsellers for this week from the New York Times. At number one, I Will Find You by Harlan Coben. A man imprisoned for murdering his three-year-old son becomes convinced his son is still alive and plans an escape. At number two, Hello Beautiful by Anna Napolitano. In a homage to Louisa May Alcott's Little Women, a young man's dark past resurfaces as he gets to know the family of his college sweetheart. At number three, It Starts With Us by Colleen Hoover. In the sequel to It Ends With Us, Lily deals with her jealous ex-husband as she reconnects with her first boyfriend. At number four, It Ends With Us by Colleen Hoover. A battered wife raised in a violent home, attempts to halt the cycle of abuse. And at number five, Daisy Jones and the Six by Taylor Jenkins Reid. A fictional oral history charting the rise and fall of a 70s rock band. Moving on to the top five nonfiction bestsellers for the week. At number one, Saved by Benjamin Hall. The Fox News journalist gives his account of the injuries he sustained from a Russian attack while covering the war in Ukraine. At number two, Spare by Prince Harry. The Duke of Sussex details his struggles with the royal family, loss of his mother, service in the British Army, and marriage to Meghan Markle. At number three, Paris by Paris Hilton. The entrepreneur and pop culture icon shares her personal and professional rise in the age of influencers. At number four, The Courage to be Free by Ron DeSantis. The Florida governor gives his account of his achievements and shares his opinions about the political left. And at number five, The Body Keeps the Score by Bessel van der Kolk. How Trauma Affects the Body and Mind and Innovative Treatments for Recovery. Our first recommended read for this week is the new novel Beyond That, The Sea by Laura Spence Ash. A young woman's family loyalties are divided as she leaves her London home for Boston during World War II in Spence Ash's magnetic debut. In 1940, 11-year-old B. Thompson's parents take advantage of a short-lived program to keep British children out of harm's way during the war and ship her to America. B stays in Boston with the wealthy Gregories and quickly becomes part of their family, which includes sons 13-year-old William and 9-year-old Gerald. Nancy Gregory treats B as the daughter she never had, while her husband Ethan sees B as a welcome addition to the household despite his austere manner. B learns how to swim at the Gregory's island home in Maine excels academically, and as a teen, 
falls for the handsome but mercurial William. At the end of the war, B returns to a London transformed by bombings and copes with the absence of her father, who died from a heart attack. Torn by her dedication to the Gregories, she tries to acclimate to life in London with her mother and new stepfather, and after finishing school and finding work as a teacher, be surprised by a visit from William. The author's choice to highlight an obscure corner of history with the overseas program adds a note of poignancy to B's story, as her voyage took place shortly before two other ships were sunk by the Germans. As well, Spence Ash generates a stronger emotional charge with her contrasting portrayals of the two families, whose cultural and economic differences make it difficult for B to find her own way. Readers will be riveted. And that's the Starred Publishers Weekly Review. Our second recommended read for this week is the new Jeanette Wall novel, Hang the Moon. Wall's breathtaking latest traces the trajectory of two feuding Virginia families and a woman who rises to the top of a bootlegging empire. For more than 50 years, bad blood has permeated relations between the bootlegging Kincaid family and the Bond brothers. Starting with the Kincaid's questionable acquisition, of 88 acres from the Bonds. Sally Kincaid's enigmatic father, the Duke, controls an Emporium General Store, warehouse, lumber mill, hauling company, and rental properties. And after a string of unexpected deaths in the family, Sally takes charge of the family business during the Prohibition years. As queen of the Kincaid Rum Runners, Sally comes to oversee a profitable business that amplifies the backwoods dispute into a fully-fledged violent war with the Bonds. The Bonds avenge the Kincaid's land grab with a calamitous act of escalation, entangling both families and exposing scandalous secrets. The thrilling plot accumulates in bombshell revelations and massive conflagrations, and through it all, Sally makes for an indelible heroine as she fights for her life and livelihood. This is a stunner. And that's the Starred Publishers Weekly Review. And if you want a historical thriller, check that one out. Our first audiobook recommendation for the week is Codename Edelweiss by Stephanie Lansom. The audio is read by Katie Zuckerman and Neil Helgers. In the summer of 1933, a man named Adolf Hitler is the new and powerful anti-Semitic chancellor of Germany. But in Los Angeles, no-nonsense Secretary Lessel Weiss has concerns much closer to home. The Great Depression is tightening its grip, and Lessel is the sole supporter of two children, an opinionated mother, and a troubled brother. Leon Lewis is a Jewish lawyer who has watched Adolf Hitler's rise to power and the increase in anti-Semitism in America with growing alarm. He believes Nazi agents are working to seize control of Hollywood, the greatest propaganda machine the world has ever known. The trouble is that authorities scoff at his dire warnings. When Lessel loses her job at MGM, her only choice is to work with Leon Lewis and the mysterious Agent 13 to spy on her friends and neighbors in her German-American community. What Leon Lewis and his spies find is more chilling and more dangerous than any of them suspected. Codename Edelweiss 
is based on a true story unknown until recent years. How a lone Jewish lawyer and a handful of amateur spies discovered and foiled Adolf Hitler's plan to take over Hollywood. Moving on to our second audiobook recommendation for this week, it's the new Sharon Sala novel, Don't Back Down. The audio is read by Tim Lunabos. Army veteran Cameron Pope arrives back in Jubilee, Kentucky for the first time in years. He barely has time to catch his breath when he becomes embroiled in a race of life or death for his little niece, and a deadly hunt for the human traffickers who are destroying the peace of his mountain town. When he's reunited with Rusty Caldwell, a woman from his past he's never stopped thinking about, he wants to believe that they can finally be together. But Cameron is shocked to find out that Rusty belongs to one of the rich families in Jubilee, the same rich folks who scorn the rural families living on the surrounding mountainside, in spite of knowing nothing about them. With their community in the crosshairs, Cameron and Rusty will have to find a way to end the feuding and take down the human trafficking ring if they're to have a chance at happiness. Just a little bit of a thriller there. Want more reading, listening, and viewing recommendations? Check out the Tech and Book Talk blog, which offers weekly and monthly recommendations, and the back catalog of Library Connections videos found on the Southeast of Bend County Library's YouTube page. You can find the Book Talk blog at ssctech.com, and that should be the Tech and Book Talk blog, but it's more talk about books than tech, to be fair. And you can find the library's YouTube channel if you just go to youtube.com and then type in Southeast Stephen County Library. When our page comes up, there'll be a link there for videos. So look for the word videos and click or tap on that, and you'll be able to access all the videos in our collection. Moving on to our next section, Next week at the library, we'll take a brief look at the events and activities being hosted by the library on and off site for the week ahead of us. This time around, that's the week, unbelievably, of March 27th, 2023, the last week of March. I can't believe it, but Tempest Fugit, as the saying goes. Calendar information is also found online. Simply visit the library's website located at SSC library.org and click on the big bold calendar link you'll see located near the top of the page. And on a registration note, registration is required for programs unless otherwise specified or unless the program is of the online on-demand variety, in which case, of course, please just help yourself. You can register for programs through the library's website by calling the library at area code 607 936-3713 or by just plain dropping by the library. On Monday, March 27th, we've got one program only and it is full, so if you've already registered, just a reminder, it's the monthly Crafting with Kimberly, and this month they're making fabric art pins. This is a recurring event, so if you like crafting and you missed out on registering for this one, take a look at our April calendar and register as soon as possible. On Tuesday, March 28th, we have a whole host of programs in library land, starting out with Coffee, Tea, and English Vocabulary from 9.15 to 10.15 a.m. It's the first program of the week in our series for adult learners of English, and this is a hybrid program held both at the library in person and online via Zoom. Then from 10 to 10.30 a.m., it's story time with Miss Sue. Miss Sue will offer an interactive story time that combines stories, books, songs, and play to promote learning. This story time is suggested for infants to little ones ages three years. 
Moving on to our next program from 10.30 to 11.30 a.m., it's Coffee, Tea, and English Conversation, also a hybrid program. Then at 1 p.m., we have the weekly SSCL Scrabble Club, which is a program being held at the library. Moving on to our late afternoon and evening programs on the 28th, from 3 to 4.30 p.m., we have the weekly GATLAS which stands for Gay at the Library After School. Gallus offers a safe and supportive space for youth to talk about gender, sexuality, and what's going on in their lives. The program is open to anyone ages 11 through 18, which is grades 6 through 12. The program is held every Tuesday, and it's a partnership program at series co-hosted by the Library and Planned Parenthood of Greater New York. Your host for the program is Carmen Greco of Planned Parenthood of Greater New York, and the library contact is our head honcho of young adult services here at the library, Kayla Crane. Then from 7 to 8 p.m., we have an online LSC author talk with Pam Jenoff, who will discuss her new book, Code Name Sapphire. This is an online program that's free to everyone. You can either access the link through the library's calendar of events online or type in the internet ease that you see there at the bottom of the screen. It starts at HTTPS, semicolon, forward slash, twice, library, with a C at the end of it, dot org, etc. You can type that into a web browser and also access the link for the LSC Author Talk. Moving on to March 29th, our first program of the day is Miss Sue's Preschool Storytime which runs from 10 to 10.30 a.m. The story time is suggested for little ones ages 3 to 6, and Miss Sue will present an interactive story time that combines moving, singing, and playing to stimulate all five senses and promote learning. This is a weekly program. Then from 1 to 3 p.m., we've got Mei Zhang, which is held weekly at the library. Moving on to our late afternoon and evening programs on the 29th. From 3 to 4.30 p.m., we have the weekly Atlas, which stands for At the Library After School. The Atlas program provides a relaxing environment to wind down after school, work on homework, play games, use library resources, and participate in guided makerspace projects. Registration is not required. Just show up. Then from 6 to 8 p.m., we've got the weekly Corning Adult Writers Group, which is held both at the library in person and online via Zoom. To get the Zoom link, contact Michelle Wells, our head honcho of adult services at the library. On Thursday, March 30th, we've got one program at the library. It's the Coffee, Tea, and English Book Club, which runs from 10 to 11.30 a.m. This program is a hybrid program, held both at the library in person and online via Zoom. Moving on to Friday, March 31st, the first program of the day is the March Artful Storytime. This is a weekly session of stories followed by arts and crafts. The program is designed for and open to preschool-aged children who are three to six years of age. And this particular program is full. Then from noon to 1 p.m., it's the March Artsy Kids program, which again is a three-week session of programs, this time around focusing on art, history, and painting. And this program is designed for an open to homeschool children ages 7 through 12. So it's the March Artful Story Time from 10 to 11 for the younger kids, if you've already registered for it. If not, check our calendar of events for future sessions. And from noon to 1, it's the March Artsy Kids for the kids that are a little bit older, homeschool kids ages 7 through 12. Then making its debut at 1 o'clock is the latest episode of Library Connections, a weekly readers and listeners advisory video cast. And our last program of the week is the Teen Dungeons and Dragons, which is held at the library. The program is led by Dungeon Master Robin. This gathering is suitable for ages 13 through 17. All levels of experience will be welcomed in this safe space. Come to one or all gatherings. 
And just an interesting note, the Dungeon Master, the new Dungeon Master, is actually on the staff of the library, so you may have seen him also working at the reference desk. And briefly, here are our library program's contacts. If you have questions about any library programs, let us know. And that's the program for this week. I'll be back next week with a new edition of Library Connections. And I may look for a warmer room to record it in. So I might have a head on next week, or maybe not. We'll see. Have a great week.